Hi friends, Maga Supreme here coming at you guys with another reading. So for this reading, I am doing another Zodiac reading. So for this reading, you know for my Zodiac reads, I uh, allow Spirit to choose what three signs uh, are going to be up next. Um, yeah, so just so you know, I, I don't really pick on my shuffle and I see what falls out and what comes to me. So... For this reading, uh, we have three three new signs. And for this reading, we have Virgo. Just know that this is for your sun, moon, and rising. I'm not going to do Venus or North Node read readings this time. So sun, moon, and rising. So we have Virgo, sun, moon, and rising. We have Taurus, sun, moon, and rising. And we have Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising. So... With that out of the way, pick your sun, your moon, and your rising sign, and let's begin. So, if you are a Virgo, sun, moon, or rising, then this reading is for you. But before we get into the reading, I do want to say this. Um, if you guys would like to see, like, have your own sign and, like, your own personal readings, then uh, I need to, like, have a bigger channel to support that kind of message and support that kind of effort. So please leave a like, a comment, and share this video with other Virgos that you may know that be that will be interested in this kind of thing. You guys can also support my channel as well by donating cards, which I love, donating money, if you want to, or booking a reading, which is also wonderful. Any way that you choose to support my channel will be welcomed. But just know that if you want to get like personal, like just a video completely dedicated to Virgo, I'm going to need a little bit more subscribers to the channel before I can like get something like that going to truly justify the effort. So now that that's out of the way, we can begin your reading, Virgo. So the way I do my Zodiac readings is I do it through tarot card pairs. Um, wow, okay, this is funny. And what we ended up getting um, from, from your tarot card pairs is the Hierophant and the Ace of Wands. What's funny is like this came out in like my very last reading, but the way that I uh, re reshuffle my cards is I put them into different parts of the deck every time. Like I do a reading with them, I put the cards into different positions. So it's funny that these two same exact cards came out again. Um, if you watched like my last video, then you probably uh, already chose the you probably chose the pile that had these particular this particular deck in it, and you're probably getting the same cards again. Uh, if not, then here's something new. So for, so for Virgo, what I'm seeing here with the Hierophant and the Ace of Wands, and at the bottom deck you have the Page of Wands, what I'm seeing here is that there's going to be some, that there is something right now, you guys are feeling really inspired to like really do something. Um, and I get the feeling like this is, oh, this could be a new job, Virgo. You guys could be like beginning a new job or feel called to go get a new job. And if that is the case, like if that's something that you've really been contemplating, Virgo, I think that you really should do it. Um, the cards and the energy here really support uh, something brand new, especially since the Ace of Wands on here is talking about career beginnings and travel. And the Hierophant is usually has a lot to do with like structures, whether it's governmental or religious or like, you know, other type of structures like that. Um even in the, in the Hierophant card itself, it says structure, knowledge, wisdom, and teacher. Um, yeah, if you if you want a new job, Virgo, or like you just want to start something new, now your energy is like really supportive about it. I'm not saying like leave the job that you're at now and then just like go ahead and 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 just do your thing. Um, I know that structure and like first of all, Virgo, well, Virgos probably wouldn't even think of doing something like that. You guys are very responsible people for the most part um, when it comes to like your finances in your, in your life. Your emotions, not so much, but at least your, your finances are always good. So Virgo, if you're feeling the need to like really get a new job or to like really enrich your knowledge a little bit more so you can be better at your job, now's the time to really do so. Like, if that's something that you've been thinking about, here's your confirmation that you're on the right path and that you're on the right train of thought. Mm. Let me pull two. Let me pull two more cards to see what else we can get from this energy, Virgo. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, because we've had the Ace of Wands, Page of Wands. So whatever it is that you want to do, whatever it is that you want to start, now's the time to do it. Now's the time to like really put put in that effort, put in the work for it. We got the Three of Wands in reverse that came out. The Three of Wands is action, adventure, and luck. And what I'm getting here is like you guys like are just like hesitating on this with the Three of Wands in reverse. What's funny is that we also had the Mother Star at the bottom, which is yes. So, you guys, like, if you really are thinking about, like, starting a new job or, like, going to school to learn a little bit more about your job, like, furthering your education or anything of that matter, now's the time to really go ahead and do it. Like, the energy for that stuff is very supported. But I really feel a sense of hesitation here in you guys with this Three of Wands in reverse. You guys might not think that you can do it, might think that, you know, you need to wait or get a little bit more, a little bit more of your ducks in a row, but... If you go forth in confidence here with the six of wands at the bottom, if you go forth in confidence and like really just go ahead and like do it, because Virgo, you guys are very smart. You guys are very good at planning. And I know that you've already thought out the details at least a million and one times already, Virgo. So only thing that's left to do is to just do it. It's time for you, if you really want to go back to school to further your education to advance your career, or if you even want to just like start a new job or like to travel more, to like really go see other other places or anything that this Hierophant and this Ace of Wands is really talking about, and it could be, now it's the time to do it. You're heavily supported here. And I just pulled the card from the top and we have the sun. Beautiful. The sun is about light, life, and energy. Like you, you got the six of wands and the sun and even the mother started talking about saying yes. So whatever it is that you're thinking about doing Virgo, you need to do it. And that's the only thing that's left. There's no more thinking, no more planning that's needed. Now is the time for action. Now is the time for you to like trust yourself, trust Trust yourself, Virgo. You thought it out enough. You gave it enough time, enough energy. You, you processed it long enough. And even if you feel like you don't have all the resources, nothing is going to change until you actually just like do it, Virgo. So do it. Do it now. <laughs> so now's the time, Virgo. Do it. Um, let's get some Oracle cards in here because the tarot cards are very clear and it's very, it's such positive energy. Yeah, Pluto is is always jumping out of this deck. This might be something that you would consider like a really big change, Virgo. I'm getting a feeling like this might be considered like sort of a, a big change to you. Like this could be something that, you know, you've only just thought about Saturn. Yeah, Pluto and Saturn is coming out together. Like I really feel like this is something that you've been thinking about for a long time and something that you've really been struggling with. Maybe this has been a decision that's been really, really hard for you to make, to choose to go and get a new job or to choose to go back to school. Um, I, those are the two things that's really just like jumping out into my head, like either getting a new job or going back to school um, to enrich your education and further your career. Either way, I really feel like there's something about you or something in your thought processes that was kind of restricting you from doing this. Like you've been really because we do have the three of wands in reverse as well with the which is action and adventure. You not taking action, you not doing something. Like I really feel like you just really been restricting yourself by not doing it. Like you there's something inside yourself that you've been trying to work out and alchemize. It could be your sense of confidence, it could be your faith in yourself or your abilities. You know, you could just be like really unsure of like, you know what it is that you wanted or like unsure of your ability to achieve this thing that you're thinking about Virgo. But if you get out your head and actually just take action, you'll quickly see that the universe will support you. <laughs> you will be supported in this move, Virgo. And you're getting a lot of energy here around like, you know, just simply do it. Like this is going to be a big transformation. It's going to change. It's going to change your career. It's going to change your life. And it's really going to allow you to feel so much better and bring like a lot of life and reinvigorate your energy and your passion for life, Virgo. So whatever it is that you're thinking about doing or changing or beginning anew, it's time to do it because that, that energy is like heavily supported. Um, let's get some more oracles here. Messages for Virgo. Messages for Virgo. 
Oh, I wanted two cards and here it is. <laughs> we got the six and the seventh house that came out together, which is funny. The sixth house is the house of Virgo and it's about sustainability. And the seventh house is about relationships. It's the, it's the house of Libra. So with the sixth and the seventh house coming out, like I said, this really could, first of all, the sixth house is your house, uh, Virgo. And this talks a lot about like maintaining order, your day-to-day -day activities, and even just like your work. Um, like going, like making sure that you have a tight schedule for work, that you're doing this and doing that, and also taking care of your health and your body. Um, the sustainability card coming out with the relationship is letting me know like it could be, you know, the fact that you're trying to balance like your work and your love life right now. But whatever it is that's happening here, like this is just a learning, a learning opportunity for you. Yeah, it's just a learning opportunity for you right now, Virgo. You've been learning how to how to balance your work life or your love life and your work together. But you've reached a point now where you're where you're where you're more capable, where you're ready. You just don't see that yet, Virgo. That you're that you're that you're literally ready. You just haven't been take you just haven't taken action on whatever it is that you've been feeling inspired to do yet because you know you just been hesitating like in your mental. So Virgo, do what you got to do to like really ground yourself and to like to like do this thing. Um I'm going to read the 6th house for you guys cuz that is your house and look, I opened the book and I ended up right on it. Okay. If your chart were a village map, the sixth house would be the central will represent the central kitchen, the gym, health clinic, and dog park. The sixth house speaks of where you live out your daily habits, your work environment, your pets, your mind and body connection, and how you tend to your health. Work smarter, not harder. The opposite of a dysfunctional situation is a sustainable is a sustainable ecosystem. Make your life sustainable. Look at the time, resources, love, care, and sweat you put into your life and assess whether you are putting as much in as you get out and whether you're receiving as much as you put in. The input and output has to match. Maybe not every day, but certainly every week or month. <clears throat> hmm, excuse me. Or you cannot sustain the long haul. The sixth house concerns your daily work, not necessarily your vocation or long or long for career. If you're waiting tables to support your acting career, the sixth house speaks of both speaks both of your day job and what you do towards that dream. Boom. Put in some time and effort on your dreams to bring these two paths closer to being one and the same. Boom. At assess your work environment. Besides the money and prof professional trajectory, most jobs offer an opportunity to bump souls with others. A stage to work through karma and to round out our personalities. And that's why you have the seventh house of relationship here. This is about your relationship with other people and specifically your relationship with other people through your work environment. Um, camaraderie can help create a healthy work environment. Attitude makes all the difference. What I'm feeling here, Virgo... Um, before I finish reading this, it's like, if some of you guys are dissatisfied with your job, don't really like the environment and like, you know, you're not really like happy there, but the money is good. Or you just feel like if you leave this job, you're not going to find anything better. It's time for you guys to really start getting out there and start putting your resume out again. If you're completely dissatisfied with your job, like I, like I've been feeling since I pulled the higher family Ace of Wands. If you're dissatisfied with your job, Virgo, now it's the time for you to go out there and like really like find a new one, especially if you don't like the people that you're working with or the people that you're working with is like kind of annoying or don't really get you or support you in the way that you want in your work environment. Because you deserve a, a lot more recognition for the things that you do, Virgo. And this could be why Saturn is showing up. To write, it, this has really been a lesson that you know Saturn's been trying to teach you. It's that you deserve better. Like you deserve a happy work environment. And also, what I'm hearing is you deserve to like work a job that's more fulfilling to your inner desires. A job where you're happy. So if that means that you like have to go back to school to like really find that job, then like do it. Or if that means that you need to just find a new job in the field that you really want to work or a new job in the same field, you have to do it. You're being heavily supported for that. Camaraderie can help create a healthy work environment. Attitude makes all the difference. Watch where you put your mind. Nervousness can turn into chronic anxiety, which taxes the health. 
Give your mental hamster, hamster something, or something worthy to work on and keep them from merely spending. Look at your daily habits and invest in good self-care. Make healthy food delicious and healthy activities enjoyable. Play with the dog or talk to the wild birds. Time with animals can restore the spirit as well as be great exercise. The challenge of the sixth house is worry can give you the illusion that you're taking care of business, but it does not further your goals. And the gift is you can create a beautiful and sustainable sustainable ecosystem out of your life as you, as you pursue a delicious, healthy work-life balance. And that's exactly what I was saying before I even read it about work-life balance. Like the job that you could be working on could be very taxing. You don't have time to date or to spend time with the people in your in your family. The seventh house is about like relationships though, not about family. So you could not have enough time to like to date or like if you have a partner, maybe you're away from home a lot because of the work. You don't really like the people there. Basically, Virgo, what I'm getting here is like you probably have really been unhappy with your job and with your work, with your work life balance. And you're being aged on to like really listen to your heart, listen to your intuition and go forth for something that's really that you really want to do here. Like you have made a bunch of wands cards and major arcana. And this is all about like heavy, a big life decision being supported. But it's only going to be supported if you take the first steps towards it, Virgo. Nothing is just going to magically fall into your lap here. You have to, you have to be brave enough to step out first and to and to make this change. Um, yeah. Let's do two more oracle cards from this deck. But yeah, Virgo, the um, the message is becoming clearer and clearer. The more cards that I pull. Like, it's time for you. Like, if you really want to change in your life, now is the time. The forgiveness card. Let me see. What else do we have here? I don't see the forgiveness card too often from this deck. I wonder what it is. Perception and perseverance. I know the perception card talks a lot about, like, following. To me, I always channel it as following your inner guidance. Because as you can see, this woman is following this crystal through a bunch of corridors. But I'm going to read, uh, read something about it. And with the Perseverance card, this is exactly what it, what it means. Don't give up, Virgo. Don't just like really fall into whatever this job is or whatever, whatever it is that's been keeping you feeling really trapped for so long. That's been keeping you unable to act. Now is the time to act because if you don't act, you'll just be missing. You'll be missing out on your blessing. That's right around the corner waiting for you, Virgo, which is a brand new job. Uh, that allows you to like be home a little bit more or like that allows you to like tend to your relationships and leaves a little bit more for fun and a work environment where you can actually enjoy the people that you work with Virgo or even like a work or a job that's really closer aligned to what you really want to do with your life not just a nine to five but also like a career Whatever, whatever it mean, whatever this means to you, Virgo, you can achieve it. So let me look at the forgiveness card. <clears throat> Amethyst protects us from toxic situations. This card indicates healing and a lot. Uh, this card indicates healing. Uh, and allowing yourself to return to the natural state of peace once again. Remember, we never forgive others. We only forgive ourselves for loving others who betrayed us. This is a time of personal evolution. Let me see. Let me also pull up some keywords for this. But yeah, I really feel like there's a situation at work that you're just not happy with at all. Not at all. Hmm. Wishes fulfilled, holding on to dreams, belonging, self-forgiveness, and fulfillment. Okay. Okay, there we go. But yeah, there's something not right about the environment that you're in. Something that's really not, something that's really not, not conducive. But for some reason, you just are too scared to go forth and act. You're not ready to act. But act is exactly what you need to do. You need to like change. You need to trigger a change. And now here we have perception. 
Emerald offers a regal ability to see things differently and a chance of embracing transformation. There is an ability to attract wealth here if you have an open heart. And like this thing says, it's time to embrace transformation. And this is exactly what Pluto rules is transformation and rebirth. Now it's the time to really go forth for what it is that you want, Virgo, because it's really going to change your life. You just got to be brave enough to like take the action towards it. So I'm going I'm to leave you guys with just one oracle card from my oracle, the Radiant Sun, and that'll be your reading, Virgo. Because I really feel like, you know, I'm not going to get the full story here. Like, I really feel like this has a lot to do with your work-life balance or like with a situation at work and either choosing to go out for a new job or choosing to like go back to school so you can like move up in your job or choosing to like really... uh find a, a better job that really offers you better work-life balance so you can go out and like, you know, date and have fun and not just be someone that just works and comes home. <laughs> Romance. Yeah. This, this could be about like changing jobs. So, or like finding a job that allows you like really go out and date more or to like allow yourself to like really go out and do things. Changing, you don't really like the, the environment in your job. You don't really like what's going on there. And now it's the time for you to go out and be inspired and allow yourself to like find something new. Let me see. Let me see. Hmm. The best business relationship that will succeed if concerned with one of the arts. Yeah. You guys could want to go and do something a little bit more expressive in your life. Like a little less like desk work and a little bit more like, you know, things that allow you to express your personal creativity. Either way, Virgo, what's really clear here is that you're unsatisfied with your job. You're unsatisfied with your current like work life situation. And it's time for you to trigger a change in your life. So go out and do it, Virgo. Now it's not the time to be shy, to be hesitant, to be scared about it. Now it's the time for you to, to act, Virgo. Now it's the time to act. What did I do with these cards? I hit it go. So thank you for your time and your energy, Virgo. And that's your reading. Be blessed. If you are a Taurus, Sun, Moon, or Rising, this reading is for you. So before we get into your reading, Taurus, I do have to say this. Um, if you guys would like, you know, more personal, like a whole video dedicated to your signs, uh, then I'm going to need like more subscribers to the channel to like really make it worth the effort. So if this video resonates with you guys or answers any burning questions, then please like share the video with other Tauruses who you might know that might be interested in this stuff or might need to hear the message. Um, also, you guys can support my channel. Uh, with the links that are in the description box, you can donate decks, you can donate money, or you can even book a reading. Any of those things really go towards like really supporting my channel, giving me the energy I need to go on, <laughs> letting me know that, you know, the work that I do is valuable. So any way that you choose that you deem worthy to support Taurus, I am all for it and I thank you for it. So with that out of the way, let's get into your tarot cards. So the way that I do my uh, zodiac readings is I start off with tarot pairs to get the, fourth, the the meaning of the energy. And for you guys, Taurus, we have the two of pentacles and the nine of pentacles. And to me, this is like very, very clear. This is about being content. Like Taurus, I think you guys are like pretty, pretty much sitting pretty in your life. Like you're in a, a pretty good area of your life where, you know, things seem to be working out for you. Like you guys are like having like a steady flow of income, possibly from two or three different sources of income. And you guys are like really living a really a, a pretty good life right now. And I see that because you guys have the three of wands at the bottom deck for you guys. 
the three of wands talks about like luck about like action like you guys haven't really been sitting on your butts lately you guys have really been like bringing in like uh, additional streams of income you guys have been keeping your money flow steady and you're sitting you're in a really good spot right now taurus i feel that very strongly and i can see it in the cards Another thing that I am getting here, though, with this Two of Pentacles is like maybe pay a little bit more attention to your day to day activities. And I can see that with the Nine of Pentacles now as well, like kind of tending to your garden, like everything on the overall, like as the grand scheme is going well. So now it's time to pay attention more to little details in your life. Like, are, like, is your schedule, like, pretty good? Like, do you find yourself, like, kind of running late to this meeting or running late to go here or there? Think about those things that, like, really try to refine, like, your schedule, your everyday life, and make sure that you're finding a good, healthy balance in your everyday life is something that I'm really, really feeling here. Um, Yeah. Wow. This is, like, very short and very sweet. Let me pull some... uh some oracle cards to go with this energy. I normally pull more tarot cards, but I really feel like I, I should start with oracles here. Why is Pluto, every time I touch this deck, it's always Pluto, every single pile, he's just excited to come out. Why is his energy so pervasive in this deck? <laughs> Let me see, and what's the second card that wants to come out for Taurus? But this could this could be a, a big time for like rebirth and change for you guys is what I'm seeing with Pluto. Like your your life has just recently undergone like a big change. Like I said, you probably added another stream of income into your life, or maybe like your money has just been like steadily flowing and you've been in a pretty comfortable position. Um if not, then that's something that's being predicted for you, Taurus, because that's very clear in the Two of Pentacles, Nine of Pentacles, is more money and balance being brought to your life and a sense of contentment and happiness and success. Like, that's all I can I can really say for you guys, Taurus. Nothing else is like jumping out. It's just Pluto. Yeah, it's just Pluto. All right, so I'll, I'll take that for what it is. Like, this, this could have just been a really big change in your life. <clears throat> this could have been a really big change in your life. Or you could have just, like, decided to undergo, like, some personal changes. Like, to be a little bit more responsible with your finances. With the Two of Pentacles here. To be a little bit more fiscally responsible. To, like, help save money. And so that way you can actually, like, earn. Instead of burn away everything that you earn, Taurus. <clears throat> Maybe curving, like, your more materialistic side. <clears throat> to like save and like allow more money to flow in. Mm. Oh, okay. What we got here? Opposition, confrontation. We got mid heaven, which is pinnacle. I feel like I should draw one more. And Gemini, cross-pollinate. So, Taurus, you could have a Gemini. You could, you could be a Gemini in Pluto, which I, I don't really, I'm not really sure. What, what does Pluto Gemini even look like anyway? Because I know Pluto Scorpio was changes that happen. And like, you know, a deep, like a very deep sense of ter in terms of your emotions. It also brings you really good insight. And having Pluto in the eighth house allows you to see the secrets of other people to really discern that kind of stuff about them. Because <clears throat> the, the eighth house is all about other people's finances. Other people's finances, inheritance, secrets, and mysteries. And with Gemini in the eighth house, maybe you <laughs> maybe you got a bit of dirt on someone. <laughs> this is just me having fun with this reading. Maybe you got a bit of dirt on someone, you've been blackmailing them. <laughs> That's how you get in your money, Taurus. Hmm. Especially with the opposition here. But no, what I'm really feeling here, Gemini, uh, Gemini, Taurus, is that you guys are starting to really get into the point to where you're hitting like the pinnacle of your of your life and your career. And it's having a lot to do with the fact that you are being very busy, that you're really communicating with other people and you're overcoming like maybe some personal things or like, you know, some blocks that you may have had. To, to get to this point to where you can like really achieve and reach the pinnacle in your life. As you can see, this card is very beautiful. And this is the pinnacle. The mid heaven is the highest point in your life. You, 
your zenith. And I really feel like you guys are really getting to a point to where everything is like what you, where you want it to be. The only thing you could be missing is a partner to share it with or like maybe like a family of your own to pass it down. Because the nine of pentacles to me is always someone that's like single, an independent person who achieved all on their own. But the Ten of Pentacles is someone who has a, a lover and has a family that they can pass down their wealth down to. So either way, Taurus, whatever whatever is going on in your life, you really have like achieved like a great amount. Like you've overcome like a lot of opposition, something that was really like challenging for you. I really feel like you overcame it and now you achieved and you've been forever changed because you achieved, you reached this point. I'm going to read the Midheaven to you guys. <clears throat> and look, I opened up the book and I landed directly on it. I'm two for two with that today. <laughs> the Midheaven contains clues about how your family trained you to be visible in the world, your relationship to other people's authority, and how you step into your own personal authority. It describes the future mountaintop, the pinnacle of your work in the world. The midheaven is the highest point of your chart where the sun would be at midday. The most public vis visible point of the chart acts like a flagpole on top of your personal castle. Inventory your personal reputation and ask what can you do to strengthen it. Update your website. Look at your definition of success and make sure it's your own. Ask what uh, if it's your own actually makes you happy and it's not one you have inherited from your family or mentors your person you know, okay your definition of happiness make sure it's true for you taurus and i feel, and I feel that energy in the nine of pentacles i really feel like you guys probably did face opposition for the work that you do or like what you would consider success like maybe you 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 wanted more money than what your family thought was ever possible for you. Maybe your family didn't really have like a high goals or high standards, but you did, Taurus, and you overcame that opposition to achieve your high goals. Um, that could be something that I'm that I'm getting here from this. Think about the training you receive from these authorities and notice where it still serves you and where you need to release their preconceptions and step into something bigger. You may need to go back to hitting dreams or reawaken an ambition that may not make sense to anybody else. And that's exactly what I just said. If you choose not to seek your sense of accomplishment as reflected in the outside world, your midheaven can speak of a quieter sense of personal authority. This is your life. Define a mountaintop for yourself. Take a step in that direction. The challenge of the midheaven is traditions. Other people's expectations or your family history may be complementary to your idea of your own potential, or there may be hurdles to overcome as you find your true path. And the gift is underneath all the worldly sense of ambition is a soul's longing to live out its potential. Listen to the call. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of like energy here. Even I mentioned something about family and the Ten of Pentacles. Like maybe the success that you finally achieved, Taurus, was something that no one in your family has ever thought was possible. Or maybe that they raised you to think that was something that you couldn't achieve and you broke free of that conditioning and achieved it. Whatever it is, Taurus, like with this Nine of Pentacles, the sense of accomplishment, the sense of success, you've achieved something that was really great in your life. And it came at the cost of you having to overcome opposition and change like how you believe with this with this Pluto card. You underwent a transformation, Taurus, um, to really to achieve this, whatever it is that is your mountaintop, whatever it is that you you deem as success. You had to overcome and change a lot to really reach this point. And you should really pat yourself on the back, Taurus. I'm hearing that. Pat yourself on the back because you were really having a, you had a hard period, a hard path ahead of you, but you really reached the success that you really wanted for yourself. And you should really be proud of that. Oh boy. Before I even like pulled anything, this one just like plopped out. What card is this? <laughs> we got observer in reverse. The thing about observer in reverse is telling me that maybe you guys haven't noticed. <laughs> maybe you guys haven't noticed that you really like hit hit like big success in your life. Maybe you haven't noticed like your how far you've came from where you once were. Maybe Taurus, you still got your nose to the grindstone, still working extra hard. And I, now I can see why the Two of Pentacles is here about the needing to find balance in your life, about needing to zoom out. 
and like really tend to more of like your daily aspects of your life because you've already achieved something really big in your life, Taurus. So allow yourself to rest a little bit before you start tackling the next big thing or trying to go up the next mountain. Take some time out to rest and enjoy your and enjoy your enjoy your success. Because the observer cards in reverse is telling me that you definitely are spending you're definitely too close to whatever it is that you're working on. You need to back up a little bit and allow yourself to really to really take in what you've achieved. Yeah, the young card. You guys have really been putting in a lot of energy, a lot of work, Taurus. I see it, I feel it, and I respect the hustle. <laughs> I respect the hustle, Taurus. Like, you guys are, because I... I feel this heavy. Like you guys have really been like working hard. You've really been just been focused. But now's the time to like zoom out a little bit. It's not the time to like really curb your ambition or to like really figure or to like really just like slow down. Now it's just the time to just like acknowledge where you've been and like learn to just enjoy, enjoy your life just a little bit more. Now it's the time to allow yourself to feel a little bit more pleasure. Enjoy the riches that you've worked so hard for, you know? I actually spend time in that new home that you bought. Like, you know, take a day or two off, <laughs> Taurus, and just like enjoy your home to go out. And don't get bored and go back into work, Taurus. Don't do that. Enjoy your time off. It, you know, take a, take a day or two off. Go and enjoy everything that you've built. I'm going to read the Observer card in reverse because I feel like the message there is going to be very, very important for you guys. This is for my successful Tauruses, Mr. and Mrs. Moneybag or whatever or whatever it is, is successful for you because it doesn't have to be money. It could just be reaching a, a point where you're just content with your life and your earnings and your finances. Um, wait, I got to read the protective, the protection message. This is 49. Ever think sometimes your life options are suction cup to your face and you can't see beyond yourself? There's a big world out there, a multitude of potential realities that you're unable to perceive at present. So you're a little stuck. It's time to get advice from someone you trust. Someone who has a better perspective on your circumstances. Other points of view are needed now before you move forward. Take heart. A beautiful vista is waiting for you, is waiting for you to drink it in. You just need a little help widening your scope beyond your small self. There's still this energy here of like how far you guys must have come. So if you haven't really like stepped into this energy yet, this message, this overall message, I can read this another way for the for you Tauruses who haven't stepped into your energy because you're being urged here. For some of you Tauruses who haven't really like stepped into this energy, like I've been talking on and on about this great success and stuff like that. But if that's not you, if this reading hasn't been resonating with you up until this point and you're still watching, the thing here that you need to remember, Taurus, is like everything that I just said before can serve as your motivation. This is what you're meant to have, Taurus. Only thing you got to do is just like really step outside yourself, step outside your conditioning and your training, step outside what your family has led you to believe, what society has led you to believe, and what you fooled yourself into thinking for yourself. It's time for you to undergo a big change and a big transformation in your life, Taurus, and to really put your energy towards something that you really, really want. Something that's like personal, that's personal, personally successful for you. And to embrace the opposition and the challenge of it. The opposition isn't a square. In uh, astrology, a square aspect is like very dense and very tough energy to overcome. Like it's more of a wall. But as you can see here, the opposition is more of a challenge. It's not a wall. And overcoming oppositions like really allow you to have to grow really big in life lessons. Like, and there's something here around that, uh, Taurus. Like, if you haven't really reached your pinnacle, if you really haven't like hit this period of success, those Tauruses who are just a little stuck right now, what you need to hear, Taurus, is that you got to go for it. Like. You're not you're not stuck. You're just like seeing this from the wrong perspective. It's time for you to like zoom out, really, really plan a lot a bit more about what it is that you want. And talk to some people who are actually successful that you may know that that really like achieved a great amount of success in their life. If you don't know anyone personally, then reach out to like, you know, successful businessmen, to CEOs or something like that. Write them an email and, and like talk to them about that about that kind of stuff. But 
Either way, if this doesn't sound, if this reading didn't sound like you up until this point, Taurus, that is what you're meant to have. That is what you're meant to achieve. But for those Tauruses who've already stepped out and done this part and have achieved, kudos to you. You've overcame a really big like challenge in your life, a really big hurdle, which is breaking free of your conditioning and breaking free of like, you know, what you've been conditioned to believe about yourself and about life. And that isn't easy. That's no small feat. So I'm going to pull three more cards for you, Taurus, and then I'm going to end your reading. Mm, okay. All right. Mm, let me keep going. No, this one just wants to come out. All right. So we have patience, loss, and friendship. Now, what this is telling me is that your ambition, Taurus, for those of you who have achieved, like it really, it really cost like this opposition energy, the challenge that you had to overcome was maybe like close friends and family here, especially with the lost card being uh, in Pisces. You probably had to lose a lot of friends, lose a lot of sleep, lose your family members. You probably had to like really go into like deep focus mode to achieve whatever it was that you wanted to achieve, Taurus. And it cost you, you had to be very patient with it, very diligent in your work. But the thing, the fact of the matter is, is that all that work paid off. You're now seeing success that you've only dreamed of or success that you've always wanted in your life or that you always believed that you could have. But if you're those Tauruses who haven't taken those steps yet, a sacrifice is required here with the lost card. You can't have your cake and eat it too in this situation. Something's got to give and something's got to change, Taurus. You can't just like continue to live in comfort, uh, to be comfortable with your life and, and expect to achieve great things. Something's got to be sacrificed and your comfort has to be given up for a time, Taurus. Because uh, it's going to require a lot of work and a lot of patience to it to reach this point. It's not going to be quick. It's not going to be easy. And you really have to make sure that you keep yourself personally motivated, Taurus. And if you have like friends who, who do support you or if you have like people that you can lean on, then lucky you, you're blessed. And you should really count on those people for advice, for guidance and for help. And for support as you go along this very tough journey and sacrifice the, and, and this journey of sacrifice as well. Either way, Taurus, you're meant to achieve and you will achieve. But only thing you got to do is overcome the challenges that's in your life. And that challenge is your conditioning. What people has communicated to you, what you've always been led to believe or about life about your potential and about what is possible in this lifetime for a human being. You can transcend those limits. You can be plus ultra. Hey, Google that term, Taurus, plus ultra. Google it and make that your motto because you can do it, Taurus, and you need and you need it. So that's your reading, Taurus. Thank you for lending me your energy. Uh, Taurus, sun, moon, and rising. And thank you and be blessed. Oh, wait, I swear I got the Pluto card back. <sighs> if you are Scorpio, Sun, Moon, or Rising, then this message is for you. So one thing before I get into you guys' message that I have to say is if you want like your zodiac sign to be more in a personal reading or just like an own dedicated video, one, leave me a comment uh, saying that. And two, share this video with any other Scorpio sign, moon or risings that you may know that may like really resonate with this message or that may hear it. The more you share my videos, the more chances I've had of gaining more subscribers. And the more subscribers I gain, the more energy and time that I can dedicate into like doing more personalized readings for each and every sign. So that's the first thing that I wanted to say, Scorpio. The second thing that I want to say is like, if this reading does resonate with you, then leave a like, a comment, and uh, subscribe to my channel if you're not. Um, if you guys want to support my channel, the links to do so are in the description box. 
You can donate decks, which I love. You can book readings, which I also love doing. Or you can just donate money if that's your twist and that's your thing. Any way that you choose to support me, I accept, I allow, and I am grateful for. So with that out of the way, we can get into your reading, Scorpio. Uh, the way that I do my Zodiac readings is I read uh, tarot pairs. And then from there, I just like go forth from the energy and I just like continue to move on. So this is a building that will build upon. This is a reading that will build upon, upon itself. So Scorpio, what I got for you guys is the magician and the nine of wands, Scorpio, sun, moon and rising. So with the magician and the nine of wands, you guys are on a precipice of like really manifesting something like you guys have been like really putting a lot of energy, a lot of your manifestation energies into like doing something. And I get the feeling that you guys are very tired. But one of the things that I'm feeling here is like there is a breakthrough that's going to be at hand. Um, you guys are really manifesting a breakthrough in a situation that's really been like really tiresome for you guys. You guys could be putting in a lot of like magic, a lot of prayer, or just like light and doing. Yeah, I'm feeling like candle magic, like light and candles, moon rituals. Um, I really feel like this Scorpio pile might really be more spiritually inclined, um, whether you know it or not. But you guys are really trying to manifest a breakthrough in your life. And I can say that because I also have the world card at the bottom deck for you guys, Scorpio. Like you guys are, are manifesting a resolution to a problem that's been plaguing you for quite a while. You're putting forth the proper energy and the proper dedication to resolving an issue that's really been plaguing you. A situation that's really been draining your energy. A situation that you're kind of just tired of having it come up. This could have a lot to do with like maybe just like your finances, your relationships, or it can be like all those areas in one. You could just be uh you could just be feeling it, like just tired of it. Yeah. I'm feeling it. You guys are just tired and you're manifesting an ending. <laughs> manifesting an ending to whatever this is. So I'm gonna pluck some more tarot cards to get a little bit more. And oh boy, these two came out. Oh, we have nine nine nine. I love this. I love this, Scorpio. We grabbed the nine of cups and the nine of pentacles, and then we have the nine of wands. Uh, look up angel number nine nine nine. Uh, angel number nine 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 is here to tell you that an ending is drawing close, that a new cycle is on a precipice of beginning. Um, the number nine 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 is also uh, the number. Of, uh, the number nine is also the number of the moon. Um, yeah, it's also the number of the moon. So you guys could have a close connection to the moon, and I wouldn't be surprised if we've seen some moon symbology come out in some kind of way. But either way, like I was saying, you guys are manifesting an ending because the Nine of Wands is a pretty malefic energy. But the Nine of Cups and the Nine of Pentacles both talk about contentment, both in like your emotional life, like your life in general improving and in your money and your finances. Like you guys are putting forth a lot of magical energy into like really manifesting an ending to something that's really been tiring you out, Scorpio. And that energy, that intention, that intense focus that Scorpios are capable of, that intense focus is really causing a shift and a breakthrough in the energy. You guys will, will be happy and you will manifest something very big and very important in your life. Like angel number 999 showing up is letting you know, like you're coming up to the end of a cycle. And we did pull the world card at the beginning and uh, that which was your bottom deck card, which talks about the completion of a cycle. You're bringing about the end of something, Scorpio, and you're working really hard to manifest a brand new beginning for yourself. It's something that I feel you're, you're manifesting a brand new beginning. Yeah. Two of cups in reverse. This could have been this. This manifestation could be like. Yeah, especially since you have the nine of cups, you could also be manifesting love into your life. Love, a lover that's really worthy of you and of your energy, Scorpio. Like you guys have like really, <laughs> I just keep, I can't shake that you guys are tired. You guys are tired of life right now and you want to change. Here it is, the four of cups in reverse as well. Like these cups are coming out in reverse now. You guys are had enough of being alone. Wow, excellent. 
Excellent, excellent, excellent. You guys have had enough of being alone, being separated, and being outside of like the crowd. Like Scorpio, deep down inside, there's a longing for you guys to like really get back out into the world, to date, and to have something that's really fulfilling you in terms of relationships, in terms of friend groups, and in terms of like actual financial gain with the Nine of Pentacles as well. We grab the Two of Wands and the Six of Wands. What this tells me here, like the Six of Wands is a very beautiful card to see. Like I said, you guys will achieve. You guys will get this thing that you're trying to manifest. Like that is a given, Scorpio. The amount of energy and amount of magic that you're putting into manifesting this brand new beginning and this brand new life for yourself is extremely palpable. Spirit hears your intentions loud and clear that you want to be happy. And you want the happiness that looks like what you look, what you want it to look like. You want uh, the lover that loves you or like just to have like a more robust dating life. You don't want to be alone in isolation anymore. You want someone to love on and you want to have <laughs> at least a good, a fair amount of options, like better people to choose from. Because I get the sense that you guys haven't really been like happy with that or happy with your options or happy with the people that's been coming into your life in terms of dating. You want better and you feel like you deserve better and you're manifesting better and you're going to get better. But the two of wands here, this is all about your intention, like you're planning the energy. Like I said, this goes hand in hand with the magician here. Like you guys are really putting in a proper energy and a proper dedication for this thing. You guys are not only manifesting, but you're taking the proper steps and planning the proper steps in your everyday life as well. You guys are really doing everything right. You guys could also be master magicians. You guys can also have Gemini placements as well with the magician card showing up here. You guys can have Gemini placements or you guys like the thing about the Scorpio card is that Scorpios are, in fact, very powerful manifestors. All water signs are powerful manifestors when they when they have enough. And they sitting there and they're crying their tears. The tears of a water of a water sign is very powerful. And Scorpios don't cry often. But if you have like cried or shed tears over your life situation, Scorpios, just know that your tears are powerful. And there's going to be a change. The universe has heard your cry, heard your plea, and it heard your spirit. And it's going to, and it's shifting and moving. Only thing you got to do is just keep your focus, keep your intention on what it is that you want. Keep your focus on your victory and what it looks like to you, Scorpio, and you will achieve it. Hands down. Hands down. You will achieve it. Bruh, you got all these major arcana that's trying to come out. The Hermit card is another nine. So you got nine, 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 nine. That's letting me know, like, you guys... Like you, you're done with like this four of cups hermit energy. You've really been focusing, dedicating, and really manifesting with the universe to bring out a completion because the world card came out again. You've really been trying to manifest a, a completion. But this completed this completion to your cycle is going to come as a shock. You're not going to know the day nor the hour when it actually comes through. This is something that the universe wants to surprise you with. Like you've really been diligent and dedicated and like trying to manifest this. And the universe is going to give it to you because you have the lover's card coming out. This is something that's going to bring harmony, love and light into your life, Scorpio. This is. Like I said, with the two of cups in reverse and now the lovers coming out, you guys have probably been man. One of the things you have been trying to manifest is a relationship as well. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that you could have been trying to manifest, Scorpio, is a relationship. But either way, all these things that you're trying to manifest, this completion to this cycle and this brand new beginning that you're manifesting is going to come out of nowhere. It's going to surprise you and it's going to come at you fast, Scorpio. So one thing I'm hearing is make sure that you're actually ready, Scorpio. You're manifesting and manifesting, but make sure that you're actually ready when, you're, when, you're, when your ships start coming in because they're going to come in and they're going to come in fast. And you need to be prepared to like ride that wave and ride that energy, Scorpio. Period. Because everything that you're manifesting is going to come in and it's going to come in like a surprise. Here we have Uranus. And let me see. Let me pull one more of these energies, of planetary energies. I'm glad something other than Pluto came out for once. <laughs> oh, boy. Jupiter. This is the energy I've been feeling. I've been feeling Jupiter here. 
Yeah, so we have Uranus and Jupiter. Uranus is all about revolution, about change. Um, Uranus is like, you know, the oddball of the group. Um, where's my uh, my book? I'm going to read a little bit more on Uranus energy. Uranus is the one planet that I really don't pay too much attention to. Like, that's not the energy dummy, not the planet I know too much about in terms of, like, blessings and what it means and what it brings. So I'm going to educate myself on that just a little bit. But Scorpio, you're bringing in, one thing I can tell is you're bringing in a revolution and you're bringing in great blessings with your inner wisdom and your spiritual connection and, and what you've been receiving and your spiritual power, Scorpio. Whatever it is that you've been manifesting is going to come in, and I'm feeling major blessings is coming for you, Scorpio. And it's going to come out of nowhere like a surprise. That's let's, let's another energy that I'm picking up from Uranus. It could be a surprise. Like, it's going to be like, because <laughs> Uranus doesn't rotate on the same axis as the other planets. So sometimes when it comes into alignment, I feel like the other planets are like, oh, shit, <laughs> when did you get here? And that's going to be like your energy, like, oh, shit, this is happening. Like, so be on your guard, Scorpio. Like, good things are, well, it doesn't help to be on your guard, Scorpio, because you, you're not going to know. <laughs> you won't know the day nor the hour when it comes in. The guy Uranus rules the night nice sky in the heavens. Astrologically, the celestial body that bears his name is also about heavenly aspir aspirations and a limitless vision of the cosmos. This is the planet that rules invention and originality, bringing a fresh point of view. Uranus is the bestower of genius, as well as originality and eccentricity, a willingness to go to extremes no matter what the norms of society might expect. This can lead to rebellion, even revolution, both personally and globally. When Uranus appears in your oracle reading, expect flashes of brilliance that lead to meaningful change. Like, yeah, Scorpio, you guys are going to be intuitively guided and led to do the right actions that's going to like to, yeah, to do the actions, to do the right things that's going to bring forth this blessing. Follow your intuition, follow your gut feeling, do whatever is coming to mind, Scorpio. Whatever you've been trying to manifest, the universe, the cosmos, the heavens hear you, Scorpio, like, I, like I've been channeling before Uranus even come out. The heavens hear you, Scorpio. You need to really harness that power, harness your intuition, because your intuition is very strong and very powerful, Scorpio. Harness your intuition because it's leading you towards your success. It's leading you towards your blessings. It's leading you towards this new life. You're receiving a lot of communication with the Mercury card out here with Mercurius. You're receiving a lot of heavenly and divine communication. Because I get the feeling that you guys aren't really talking to other people. You guys are alone in your life. <laughs> you guys are alone in your life. So this communication can only be from, from spirit. You're receiving a lot of communication and you're due for some really good news. And like I said, it's going to be a surprise. It's going to come in so fast one day and it's going to be a shock. And it's just all going to be in. I'm hearing like a windfall. One after another, like blessings upon blessings upon blessings will start raining in, Scorpio. So be prepared. Get yourself ready. <laughs> Get yourself as ready as you can each and every day to have your life changed. When good things start happening for you, don't start complaining that a lot of good things is happening too fast, though I can never imagine someone doing something like that. But things are going to start happening for you fast, and you just need to be there to, to receive. And what's funny is that we pulled the 8th house card, and Scorpio rules the 8th house. Let me pull one more. Yeah, Scorpio, you guys have very powerful magnetic energies. I can feel it all through me as well. Oh boy, this one jumped out. And it's <laughs> in strength. This is coming out and all in my cards. So one thing that I'm hearing here is that you could have like Plu uh you could have like your Scorpio, like in a sign that's really like fit for it. You could have Pluto or Mars Scorpio. But either way, I get the feeling that wherever your Scorpio is, even if it's a Scorpio moon, because the Scorpio moon isn't like a strengthened placement for, for the uh, Scorpio or for the moon. But if even if you have like that kind of placement, your, your moon might also be properly aspected. Like you might have a lot of supportive like energies around your moon and your natal chart, even if you are a Scorpio moon, which isn't very which isn't a good placement for Scorpio or the moon. Neither one likes being there. But you could also have Pluto, Scorpio, or Mars in Scorpio. And it could be situated in your eighth house, um, which is the house of Scorpio. 
But another thing that I'm feeling here, like with this eighth house, is that your 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 abundance, your success is going to come from the form in the form of another person. Uh, Cause the eighth house is about other people's finances through like inheriting something through a will or through a beneficial marriage or like do a do a healthy uh, do a partnership that's like abundant like. Since you guys might have a properly aspected eighth house, a very supported eighth house, you could end up getting lucky and meeting a, a rich lover or meeting someone that like is able to support you in a way that you want to do and in a, in what you want to achieve, Scorpio. And the biggest thing is like you have like the dignified card. Your Scorpio, your Scorpio placement, whether it's in your sun, your moon, or your rising sign, is very well aspected. Like it's very well aspected and the energies, the cosmos supports you, Scorpio. That's one thing that you I have to tell you. The cosmos supports you. You have cosmic and heavenly blessing. You you have your <laughs> they hear you. I, I can't explain it any other way, Scorpio. The stars hear you, the heavens hear you. And that's what's coming to me very loudly and very clearly. So let's read the eighth house to get a little bit more information. <clears throat> if your chart were a, a, a village map, the ace house, the eighth house would be on a corner of the red light district next to a mortuary and a savings and loan bank. It is a private house where we deal with things we don't talk about in public. Sex, death, debts, loan, psychic and psychic phenomena. Here we deal with other people's resources and how they are exchanged. Money, bodies, thoughts, and work, and how we inherit goods and attitudes. This house can feel uncomfortable, but it's a place where we where we can transform. Assess the power dynamics between you and other people around important resources like sex, money, and inheritance. Notice if a relative or a boss withholds money until you behave, or if you or a lover withholds sex until some other need is met. Just get clear in your own mind if anyone is pulling strings and try to heal dysfunctional dynamics with clear and healthy boundaries. Seduce honestly. Not all strange sexual, not all strange sexual dynamics or unusual financial arrangements are a problem. If you understand your peculiarities and don't feel coerced or controlled by them, they are just a part of who you are. Financial investors and advisors, consultants, ministers, lovers, intuitives, brain trusts, auctioneers, and investigators all work with eighth house affairs. If they work with the, with integrity, they do so productively. Develop your second house resources, your own money, sense of worth, and body confidence to strengthen your freedom and bargaining power and operate in this realm of grace. Engage the resources handed to you, but make your own judgment calls. The eighth house calls for one last freedom to acknowledge that death exists and can be fully alive and be fully alive in response. The challenge of the eighth house is it can be tempting to manipulate by withholding love, power, or money, and hard to step away when someone else is jerking those chains. But the gift is face your worst fears and step through and step through. Feel that liberation. The trap of manipulation falls away when you don't bite the book. Yes, yeah, Scorpio, this is all about knowing your personal power, not letting anyone get the get the hold over you. But the biggest thing that, like, like I said, it's like your windfall, your money can come in the form of somebody else. Your your lucky break, your this change in the shift could come from the form of someone else. Someone coming forth and wanting to sponsor you to like really advise you or to like really just like give to you in a way that's really beneficial and a way that's like actually substantial. So you can actually do some real change in your life for once. But either way, Scorpio. This energy is very, very palpable and it's very, very strong here. I feel it. Like there's something really good that's coming your way, Scorpio. So before I end your reading, I'm going to get some of these Oracle of the Radiant Sun cards and see what comes out for you guys. I'm just flabbergasted that we have that. Mars and Libra, choice. Sun and Aries, assertion. <laughs> And Gemini and Venus with flattery. And then we have another Gemini card at the bottom deck, which is Mercury and Gemini, which is excitement. So, 
Scorpio, what this is telling me is like you need to keep your energy and your attention focused on the choices that's going to bring you what you need. Stand up and be bold in whatever choice that whatever choice it is that you need or whatever it is that you're going to make. One of the things that I'm feeling here with the flattery card is warning, but also an advice. Uh, do not accept people who only give you the bare minimum or who only just come with you with pretty words, but no no actual actions. That's the part of what the flattery card is with Gemini and Venus, which is also one of my placements. Gemini and Venus can be a very smooth talker, can be very flattering, very charming. But don't be fooled by just charming people. Make sure that the person that's actually trying to charm you, they can put up or they or they you need to shut them up or like establish good boundaries to keep them out, Scorpio. Make sure that you're very clear on what it is that you expect out of a lover, out of your life, and whatever it is that you want. And make sure that you make the proper choices in regards to lovers and your relationship with people. That's something that's very important. And like I said here with the lovers in the eighth house. This abundance is probably going to come through someone else, like whether it's going to be someone that's coming in as a love interest, someone that's coming in as an advisor or an investor or as a sponsor or someone to endorse your work. Make sure that this person is that if they do come at you with these kind of offers, that they're serious and that they're not just talking. Wait for them to prove with their action and not just their words, Scorpio, and be excited. Whatever it is that you're doing, whatever it is that you're going to try to communicate, you need to make sure that you are excited about it, Scorpio, because know that this good thing is coming. And the more excited and grateful that you are for messages and signs that come that let you know, the more easier you can ease into this manifestation and the more prepared you'll be when it actually comes, because it won't be too much of a surprise because it's like, OK, instead of being surprised, you're like, OK. My ships are coming in. The time is now. It's time for me to get up and get into get to work. It's time for me to like put my put my action, put the wisdom, put everything that I've been filled with in the in that in the previous period to action and put it to work. It's time for me to bring in this new cycle. And you should be really excited about that, Scorpio. I'm gonna look over the excitement card just a little bit more, just to see if there's anything that I'm missing in regards to this. Wow. When this card when this card appears in a reading, it usually indicates that the questioner will benefit from a period of busy, communicative socializing with plenty of short trips related to the question. Negatively, the assignment card can donate constant changing of the mind and jumping from one decision to the next with equal excitement and enthusiasm that annoys others. The events are a publicity campaign, a new subject for study, an opportunity to make a speech, an important decision. Chain and decision comes out twice with choice and with this card. So it's going to be a decision to make. Changing one minds on an important issue in a busy social calendar. So yeah, Scorpio, be prepared to be busy, to be making appearances to people, to really like have to like communicate and rub elbows with people. I really feel like whoever is going to come in, you need to make sure that your show, that your social skills are sharp, that you're not just being standoffish, and that you know how to communicate yourself effectively with purpose, and to like really know how to put up a good speech, a new a good presentation, and a good project, Scorpio. That's going to be very important for you going forward in the future. So when this happens, make sure that you keep that in mind. I don't know what it is that's going to be happening for you, Scorpio. I feel a bunch of different things for a lot of people. But with the Uranus card here, it can literally be anything. It can be anything. <laughs> this is a very random, very chaotic, but beautiful energy because Jupiter is overseeing it all. So whatever is going to happen, whatever sense of revolution and change that's going to be coming in quickly that's going to have you like oh uh, that's going to really allow you to communicate and like i said you guys could have gemini placements with the mercury here and we have two gemini cards coming out you're you're the the that gemini energy is going to be something that you're really going to have to lean on scorpio um yeah, that Gemini energy is something that you're really going to have to lean on. You could have Gemini Venus or Gemini Mercury or even like Sun and Gemini. But either way, Scorpio, that Gemini aspect, that ability to communicate effectively, to come up with presentations, to really just like speak your piece. That's what's going to be really, really important once your boats and everything starts moving for you, Scorpio. So keep that in mind. 
Thank you for your energy, Scorpio. Thank you for sitting with me for this reading. And please be blessed. Bye.